how do we dare call ourselves a civilized society and continue not only a system that that effectively denies 50 million Americans any level of health insurance and another 50 million who are considered underinsured, spending 10% or more of their income every year. But to me, this is what you need to remind yourselves of and remind everybody else you know, and that is that 98% of us cannot withstand a medical catastrophe. Only the super wealthy, multimillionaires, can actually survive that. In the United States today, among all personal bankruptcies, 60% are medical cost related. 60% of all personal bankruptcies. That's one and a half to two million Americans every year falling into medical bankruptcy, and that's 40,000 of our friends, neighbors, and relatives right here in Pennsylvania. And this tragedy is going on all around us. We can talk recession all we want, but for these folks, that is a depression. For people who lose, lose their jobs, they are suffering a depression. For those who cannot get the care that they need, they're suffering not only economic calamity, but also moral and psychological. So truly, this fight is about restoring America's place as a civilized nation, let alone our claim to leadership in the world. Uh, we got a resolution passed unanimously in Philadelphia City Council, and I know that Walter was integral to that effort, as were the Pennsylvania nurses, as is the Council of Churches, as is the League of Women Voters, and the list goes on and on and on. AFL-CIO, American Medical Student Association, the number of organizations that are nonpartisan, that are genuinely concerned about people and the richness of our society, have wrapped their arms around single payer and have not run the other direction. People who are running the other direction are running because they're afraid, they're not sure, they just don't know, and are easily manipulated into thinking that this is not possible. And yet, as Walter said, Medicare is single payer. It exists here in the United States. Taiwan uses the Medicare model. They used that when they constructed their own medical system 10 years ago. And yet, as Walter said, 6% of GDP there, 16% here. We've got single payer in the United States. So let's stop being afraid of ourselves. Let's stop being afraid of our own democracy. Let's tell Barack Obama, who was a single payer supporter when he was a state senator in Illinois, to stop being afraid of what he knows is the only proven solution. This isn't pie in the sky. This is demonstrable. This is academically evidence based healthcare policy and reform for the United States. The problem that we find, and it's the reason that we are passionately nonpartisan, <coughs> devoutly nonpartisan. I'm a lifetime Democrat, but darn it around healthcare, I see Democrats run the other direction. And I'll, I'll tell you though, I met with Dominic Pelleggi a few months ago at his office in Chester County his Senate office, and we talked through the single-payer solution. And I've had this discussion with Joe Scarnati, who's considered a bad guy, and I've had this discussion with Don White, who is the Republican chair of banking and insurance, and I've had the discussion with, with the entire leadership on both houses, in, in, in the House of Representatives and in the State Senate in Harrisburg, and when you have a calm discussion, and you deal with the facts straight up, they're absolutely stunned, absolutely stunned. And this is, an, this is an issue I believe, mark my words, I believe we're gonna get this done in the Republican State Senate of Pennsylvania first because of many, many reasons, but the Republicans are gonna to have to try to find a way back. They've lost a whole lot of their reputation. But the Democrats are problematic here for the reason that Democrats now take more campaign funds from insurance companies and pharmaceuticals, as many of you who have drilled down and understand this issue know, than do the Republicans. So it's, a, it's an issue where our winning coalition, and I'm going to tell you right now when we're going to get this bill signed. I'm going to make our prediction today, and I'm going to tell you exactly who is going to be the winning coalition. The winning coalition in Harrisburg, because Harrisburg, as a Pennsylvania capital, will model the solution for the United States. This is our federalist system. 
This is actually the design of our Constitution, where each of the states are laboratories producing positive reforms and outcomes. Take a look at the Progressive Era, which began specifically in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which a decade later moved to Madison, and which a decade later moved into Washington, D.C., with a Republican, Teddy Roosevelt. The way we're going to win this is with the combination of conscience Democrats, conscience Democrats, and conscience Republicans. Here in the state of Pennsylvania, we were the first and only to get any Republicans to sign on with single-parent legislation. The first one was last session, Dave Style from Newtown, Bucks County, my home county. I live in Plumstonville outside Doylestown. This session, we set our goal to bring on three new Republicans because Style was giving up his seat. He was retiring at the end of last session. And we set our goal at three, and we got four. And then, as the healthcare debate has been unfolding, if that's what we want to call it, I would call it unraveling in Washington, D.C., there's been one glimmer of serious light and victory for single payer. For those of you who don't know this, Dennis Kucinich, the congressman from Ohio, <laughs> was able to insert in House Resolution 3200, which is the work in progress Democratic legislation in the House, right? There are three committees in the U.S. House of Representatives that are contributing to this discussion. And education and labor is one of them. Dennis Kucinich introduced this legislation which would give an exemption, an ERISA exemption for states to move forward on single payer. The vote was 25 to 19. Of those 25, how many do you suppose were Democrat and how many do you suppose were Republican? 11. 11 Democrats and how many Republicans? 14. How astonishing is that? Now, there's a, there's a formula here for understanding it. It's not simply straight up and down, 14 Republicans support single payer in principle and concept, but here's the way it works. Republicans do actually support state level reforms. And I've had this conversation with Stuart Butler at the Heritage Foundation, who is the preeminent conservative thinker on healthcare economics. And he believes that single payer should be on the table. We've even gotten Arlen Specter to say it should be on the table, and Joe Sestak to say that single payer should be on the table. Unfortunately, Barack Obama, Harry Reid, and Nancy Pelosi from day one said it's not on the table. Now, whether you actually believe it, whether you believe it can get done or not, strategically, what a boneheaded thing to do. Why would you take away a bargaining position why would you cut one of your legs off and try to run a marathon on the other leg? That's what the democratic leadership of this nation has done around health care. You can tell my behavior is rather nonpartisan. I don't really much care except to get this done. We've got to get this done. We've got to be smart. We've got to talk to Republicans. We've got to talk to our friends. We've got to educate our neighbors. We've got to spell out the basic facts around health care. We want evidence-based health care. We've been trying desperately to get support for an economic impact study. We want a thoroughgoing economic study of our legislation, and we would love dearly for that to compare with the Democratic proposals and the Republican proposals, because we know for a fact that single-payer would come out far ahead. Far ahead. So, I want to ask you now to Talk to your state house members, and please make a pledge to do that. And I would say, talk to them personally, write them a handwritten note, write them an email, send them a fax, talk to their <laughs> staff. Seriously, the more ways you hit them, the better. You don't have to isolate yourself to one form of communication. Multiply yourself, and you can actually do that. 